dear students today we are going to discuss about actualizing tendency and fully functioning person this lesson focuses on the factors facilitating self actualization tendency of human being which is innate human potential even though it is innate potential realization of it is not very easy it requires a consistent effort from the part of the individual and few external conditions which favors it rogers believe that every individual are inherently creative and not bad they become harmful only because of a poor self concept or external constraints that override the orgasmic valuing process he also insists that congruence is necessary in order to achieve self actualization individuals who are congruent and self actualized are functioning fully he also described the characteristics of the fully functioning person like abraham maslow's self actualized person rogers list out the few factors which can help an individual to become fully functional fully functional person could achieve their goals wishes and desires in life they are exceptionally healthy people who are adaptive adjusted and very much balanced in life they could be the high achievers in this world they are aware of all their experiences positive as well as negative they have appreciate all life happenings trust themselves and also others enjoy better freedom in their life more creativity and spontaneous continual need to grow major objectives of this lesson are to understand the actualizing tendency to explore various conditions that facilitate actualizing tendency and to know the fully functioning person and its important characteristics actualizing tendency in the previous lesson we have tried to understand the self self concept ideal self real self self actualization and congruence now let us examine the process of development of ideal self in different conditions Rogers view of self is ready to accept the role of reinforcement and punishment given for the early developmental period to shape the individual's behavior rather he condemned the process of using it each child has the natural innate need to be loved if parents are taking care of their kid well attend to the kid's needs and requirements timely allow the kid to participate in many stimulating activities can influence the development of self smoothly and steadily at times child may do things wrongly which may get parental engagement of punishment during the administration of punishment few parents may go to severe level by keeping themselves away from the child because of the misbehavior they are actually making their love and affection more conditional to the kid if you behave in this way i'll show you my love when you behave in another way i will withhold my love i will not talk to you i will not hug you i will not cherish you here receiving love is more conditional in order to receive love i need to behave in the accepted way when parental love becomes more conditional that will destroy the actualizing tendency conditions of worth parental appreciation to the child helps the child to understand their worth in due course of time this will help to develop positive regard the child with positive self regard will have positive regard for other person they start segregating the behavior which will lead to parental appreciation and which will lead to parental restriction they develop self image on the basis of conditions of worth this will lead to 
conditional positive regard which is quite opposite to unconditional positive regard which involves parents love and acceptance of the child without conditions without depending on child's behavior. Let me explain with a simple example. Every time the infant drops an object out of the hand, parents expresses their anger with harsh voice. These external standards of judgment will slowly become internal and personal when it occurs repeatedly. They may go to the level of self-administering punishments when similar behavior repeats. By imbibing the standards of their parents, they start viewing themselves as worthy or unworthy, good or bad, useful or useless according to their parental terms. They start intentionally avoiding such behavior which may personally satisfy them. They are not functioning freely. I am not good at English. Boys don't cry. I am a high achiever and girls are weak are the simple examples of the introjected values which restricts individual's development of self-concept. They will start perceiving the further experiences with this restriction or distorted way. Their ideal self will consist of many distorted perception which may not be achievable and leads to emotional and anxiety problems. Let's understand the concept of incongruence. We have introduced incongruence in the last lesson itself. It is the mismatch between the ideal self and real self. This is one of the important impediments for the actualizing tendency. Imagine an individual has an ideal self like I love all mankind. In reality, if he need to encounter a situation where he develops hatred towards his friend, he may not be able to accept this as his ideal self claims that I love all mankind. He may try to avoid hatred by involving defensive action like denial. He can't accept the realistic experience. Similarly, he can't accept other persons also. When he does not do anything for hatred, it will continue and reaching to the ideal self will become mirage. Same way, difference can occur in many dimensions of self-concept in a more or less complex way. So, the gap between ideal and real self increases as we point out as incongruence. Conditional positive regards, orgasmic valuing are two important contributors of this incongruence. Unconditional positive regard can allow the individual to be free in their choices and leads to congruence. Now let's look into fully functioning person, actualizing tendency, unconditional positive regard and congruence are the core of person-centered therapy. It requires different skills like active listening, empathy, positive regard, non-directional support, etc. in order to involve ourselves in person-centered counseling. Person-centered counseling or therapy is in general non-directional as the counselor do not direct the sessions on any particular predefined direction. But it is majorly directed towards enhancing the functionality, shaping towards fully functioning individual. Fully functioning person is Roger's term for self-actualization. For developing all facets of life, it is a process and not a state. It is not a destination, rather a direction. These persons will reach an optimal sense of satisfaction in their life. These persons have few basic characteristics in common. Let us explore the unique characteristics of fully functioning person and how do they contribute for the healthy, mature and adaptive living while being free from the emotional turmoil and anxiety. A 
aware of all the experiences. Fully functioned persons are aware of all their experiences both positive and negative. There is no need for the distortion or denial of any experience. Let us see this example. I have difficulty in mathematics. I got fewer score in last school test. My parents are ready to help me to improve my mathematics by involving more time with me. Identifying good mathematics teacher for tuition and taking help from their friends. My behavior of not scoring good marks in mathematics is not resulting in conditional approval or conditional regard. When it is conditional, I may need to avoid such behavior engaging in any of defensive action like test was too hard, teacher did not teach me well, time was not sufficient, everyone got less marks. These defensive actions will distort the reality instead of equipping me to face mathematics well in coming days. When I am experiencing unconditional positive regard, I need not deny the experience of fewer scores in mathematics. Instead, I can understand more about my ability in that aspect of the study, try to fulfill the necessary requirements for my current level and use the same information wisely to decide about the area of their specialization. Fully functioning person are very much open to positive feelings like courage, tenderness and to negative feelings like pain and fear. They are ready to accept all the experiences as it come. The person who has this characteristic is moving towards the direction of self-actualization. Life comes with all experiences, good as well as bad, positive as well as negative, adaptive as well as non-adaptive. Fully functioning person do not have any difference in their experience. They involve equally in all the experiences without any bias or pretensions. They do not predict or anticipate the desirable experience to occur to them rather they participate fully in all experiences. They could learn from all the experiences in their life. They do not generate any hesitation or emotional disturbance for any of their experience. They try to find the importance and relevance of that experience in their future life. One of my friends met with an accident in car. None got injury. My friend got little shock after the accident, but that experience made him how to drive in a way to avoid such an accident. He does not deny the accident or fully distort it saying the other driver is the cause of accident. Fully functioning person trust their own reactions rather than being judged or driven by the opinions of others, societal codes or intellectual judgments. This does not mean that they don't listen to other persons, they are receptive of other people. They listen to all persons and take everyone's idea, consider each one of them in the light of their own sense of self, finally decide on the basis of evaluation of all the ideas. They do not have any experience to be denied or threatening to their self-concept. One person got an admission in an institution of national repute. He enquires to all the people about this and gets information according to their view. When he has trust on himself, he does not need to worry or fear for anything which may happen in the future. I have applied here for admission in the Institute of National Importance. Getting admission is a pride. Similarly, I may need to work hard to complete the course over there. I trust me as I can do. Finally, he may go and take admission and work hard to complete the course. When he has any fear or worry on his academics, he will not evaluate the opinion of others in the light of fact, rather based on the satisfaction of his own self to avoid further fear and worry. 
if I go to an institution with repute, I may need to try harder which I don't like. It is better to go and get admitted in a simple place where there is less expectation from me. The fear or worry about academics restricts an individual from accessing better experience in their life which is not fully functional. Feel free to make choice without constraints and inhibitions. This is the continuation of the previous paragraph. They have good understanding that their future is depending on their own preset behavior, not on the circumstances, past events or other people. They are free from the situations and try to make necessary decisions which can change the situations. Creative, live, constructively and adaptively. Fully functioning person are quite creative and spontaneous. The external circumstances are continually changing. They could sense the change precisely and be ready to make desirable modification in their selves in order to be adaptive to the changes. Fully functioning person is capable of continuous testing, growing and striving. He can use all his potential to face the life that brings complexity and challenge with help of his character. He is more focused to experience life as it comes. Make changes in his values as experience teaches. He would be ready for the everyday challenges. He may not get back on the sight of a difficult task, rather he try to see himself in the light of possibility to manage the difficult task. Overall, we could conclude that turned or synchronized self-concept has the potential to grow continuously and actualize oneself. When it is disturbed because of conditional positive regards, conditional affection or incongruence, the ability of the person to grow is undermined. If person do not realize his real worth, he gave less importance to the ability of him to grow and stuck in his life with that limitation. How elephant's power lies in its trunk, likewise human's power lies in his self-concept. We are bound by the limitation of our self-concept. If we wish to grow, we can grow. If we do not wish to grow, we do not grow. Truth lies in our hand, whether we wish or we don't. It would be little magical to understand. When it comes as a result of the counselling session, each one could appreciate the important role of person-centred counselling. Person-centred counselling Human development depends on many factors within us and apart from us. Mature, healthy and adaptive persons are fully functional and may experience less trouble in their life compared to another one who is immature, unhealthy and maladaptive. These maladaptive persons are the one who may need professional help at times in their life according to the severity of the maladaptiveness. Out of this, only very few percentages will require biomedical assistance to cure their illness. Major chunk of these maladaptive persons will easily become more adaptive with the help of the counsellor who follow any type of therapy or counselling. They may face difficulty in adapting to the new school, new friends, new circumstances, new relationship, new roles, new responsibilities, new culture, new status, etc. They may lack the functional aspect of the self. If we could help them to understand the misfunctional or dysfunctional self and provide care and support for them to learn new skills to make themselves more functional, then we are more oriented to person-centered counseling. The direction of the counseling session is depending on the nature and the type of the problem the individual is facing, how he perceives it, how much disturbing is it to him, how much effort is he ready to take, which issue he may wish to address 
and what is the outcome he wish to bring. With this background, Rogers call this approach as person-centered approach. Roger, in the year 1961, have pointed out that I can prove a certain type of relationship. The other person will discover within himself the capacity to use that relationship for growth and change where personal development will occur. Personal development is the aim of this counseling approach. In order to establish this relationship with the other person, we need to develop few important skills in ourselves. These skills will enhance us to understand the other person in deeper level, communicate our understanding to the individual, identifying the deviation or distortion in the client's frame of reference, initiating the awareness about it to the person, being there with him in his effort to modify it and becoming a fully functional person. Role of the counsellor would be a facilitator rather than a dispenser of solution to the current problem. Client will learn how to cope with the present problem as well as how to manage himself for future problems. This will take many sessions of contact with the client to achieve the results. In this lesson, we have learned about actualizing tendency and the conditions which can allow the actualizing tendency to strive or to hamper for example, unconditional positive regards, conditions of worth and congruence. When they allow the actualizing tendency, the person can become fully functional. Otherwise, he may need external help to become fully functional. We have also tried to understand the important characteristics of the fully functional person.